Probably good. Hit record. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start the webinar. Hey folks, thanks for joining us. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes and let people start filing in and getting settled and then we'll get started. Thanks for being here. Hey everyone, if you're just joining us, we're just waiting another minute or two, let uh, other attendees get in and settled, and then we'll get going with the presentation. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Tarantino. I am the Preservation Delaware Education Committee Chair. Thank you all for being here. And thanks to Emily, who's our speaker for this next presentation. Um, also want to give a big thanks to our 2023 conference sponsors for their support. And then just a couple of Zoom logistical items. So all attendees are muted, but you can use the Q&A function to ask questions, um, which we'll take at the end of Emily's presentation. The chat box is there if you need to get a hold of panelists, if you're having technical difficulties or another issue. And then we will be recording this presentation as we do with all of the other conference virtual sessions. Um, so those will be available after the conference on our website or YouTube channel. And then lastly, if you aren't already a member of PDI, we hope you'll consider joining us. You can check out our website. There's a ton of good information on there. Um, the member support helps keep events like this one free. So we really appreciate your consideration. And last but not least, I am gonna hand it off to Dee Durham, who is our current Preservation Delaware president to introduce Emily. Thanks, Alex. So yes, this session is uh, frequently asked questions of the National Register program, and we will definitely uh, save room for your questions uh, in a few minutes. So uh, as Alex said, hang on to them or put them in the Q&A. Um, but it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Emily Whaley to uh, us with us today. And Emily is the cultural preservation specialist and architectural historian with the division, Delaware Division of Historical and Cultural Affairs. Um, sorry, let me close one thing on my screen. Um, and uh, Emily earned a BA in Historic Preservation from the University of Mary Washington and is currently working towards an MA in Historic Preservation at Goucher College. Very busy person. Um, her responsibilities at the division include reviewing nominations and project proposals for the National Register of Historic Places, uh, helping uh, handle the Historic Preservation Tax Credit Program, consulting with federal, state, and local agencies and applicants on proposed construction projects and other preservation planning work. So welcome, Emily. Thanks for uh, doing the session with us today. And I'll turn things over to you for now. Well, thanks, Dee. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, let's see here. All right. Does that look OK? I don't see your screen yet. Oh, OK. So let's try again. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Yep. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking uh, time out of your busy schedules to participate in Preservation Delaware's annual conference. Uh, this afternoon, I would like to spend time discussing the National Register Program and specifically common or frequently asked questions of the State Historic Preservation Office um, regarding the National Register Program. So let's go ahead and start with the basics. Uh, when exactly is the National Register of Historic Places? The National Register of Historic Places is the nation's official list of cultural resources worthy of preservation. It is part of a national program that coordinates and supports public and private efforts to identify, evaluate, and protect historic and archeological resources. The process for nominating a property to the National Register of Historic Places is a multifaceted process um, requiring documentation. And hopefully today you'll learn a little bit more about that process. 
Sitting in the National Register of Historic Places is an honorary yet formal recognition of a property's historical, architectural, or archaeological significance. Though listing a historic property in the National Register of Historic Places is an honorary designation, property owners are eligible for a variety of advantages, including potential eligibility in Delaware's Historic Preservation Tax Credit Program, opportunities for participation in specific preservation incentives, such as state and federal preservation grants for planning and rehabilitation, federal investment tax credits for commercial properties, preservation easements for nonprofit organizations, and possible building code adjustments. Additionally, when, you, when the use of uh, federal funds for permits comes into play, there is a review under Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act. So there are several different types of nominations, including individual, districts, multi-property, and amended nominations. For today's conversation, we're going to mainly focus on individual nominations, though much of the information presented can be applied to all different types of nominations. In order to be considered eligible for the National Register, a property must meet certain criteria for evaluation set forth by the National Park Service. Age, integrity, and significance are three tools used to evaluate a property for listing in the National Register. Starting with age, we'll want to look at how old a building is. Another way of thinking about this is when the building was constructed. Our goal with studying the age of the building is to determine if a property is old enough to be considered historic by the National Park Service's definition. Typically, a property should be at least 50 years old. However, in special cases, there are ways to nominate younger properties if they've gained exceptional importance or significance utilizing criterion consideration G. But in general, a property should be at least 50 years old, which means that uh, in 2023, we're looking at properties that were built in 1973 or uh, older. Um, it's important to note that a property is not eligible for listing in the National Register based on age alone. Uh, a building or property must possess integrity and significance uh, to be considered for National Register eligibility along with its age. So let's go ahead and move on to integrity. The National Park Service requires a property to retain certain levels of integrity and has defined integrity into seven specific categories, including location, design, setting, materials, workmanship, feeling, and association. Not all properties must possess high levels in each category, though the integrity of a property possesses uh, must be relevant to its significance or the reason why it's being nominated to the National Register. The various aspects of integrity can help to determine the way a building looked and when it was used in the past and make a comparison with the way the building looks today and how it is used today. In other words, these seven categories can help to evaluate the building and determine if a property looks the way it did in the past. It can help explain changes to the building um, over different periods of time, thus making a case for um, significance in the National Register. In addition, for our, in addition to age and integrity, properties must also possess significance. The National Park Services uses four criteria for significance, A, B, C, and D. Criterion A is for uh, nominations that are associated with events that have made significant contributions to the broad patterns of our history. Criterion B is used for nominations that are associated with the lives of persons significant in our past. And criterion C is best used for buildings or structures that embody the distinctive characteristics of a type, period, or method of construction, or that represent the work of a master, or that possess high artistic value, or that represent a significant or distinguishable entity whose uh, components may lack individual distinction. In other words, um, properties with architectural merit are best used for criterion C. Lastly, criterion D is for properties that have yielded or may likely to yield information important to our past. This criterion is typically associated with archaeological sites, though it can be applied to buildings. The criteria for significant are broad, allowing for different types of properties with different types of histories to be included in the National Register program. Additionally, the National Park Service has a list of areas of significance that serve as subcategories to the four criteria for significance. These areas of significance can help define uh, Section 8, or the historic context portion of the nomination. I have various areas of significance on the screen, but don't worry, there isn't a quiz at the end. This is just to show you that there are a wide variety of avenues available when making a case for significance. So with all this information, you might be wondering how to collect information for a nomination. It might feel a little bit overwhelming, right? Uh, the National Park Service has developed a variety of research questions for consideration when studying a property for a nomination. 
Each property will take on its own research path. However, the State Historic Preservation Office is a great starting point. Our office can share information if the property has been surveyed in the past and help, can help develop a nomination schematic to guide research. Once you have the basics, you'll want to reach out to local repositories that might have information about your property. To conduct research for a nomination, you may need to utilize sources such as census data, deeds, probates and orphan court records, uh, fire insurance policies, or historic maps, just to name a few. The Delaware Public Archives in Dover and your local historical society are both great starting points uh, for conducting research. Additionally, there are a variety of online repositories for certain types of records like newspapers, but just as a general caution, always remember that not all historic records are digital and you might actually have to make a trip to the um, repository itself to really get the information that you're needing, which is always fun. Um, so let's jump into the process of uh, nominating a property to the National Register. The nomination process begins with the State Historic Preservation Office. Staff from our office are able to provide research guidance and ensure that documentation conforms with current National Park Service standards. Once a property is evaluated and determined eligible for the National Register, the State Historic Preservation Office will work with the nomination preparer to draft a nomination schematic. A nomination schematic serves as a planning document for research and drafting the nomination and will assist in those research efforts as mentioned earlier. Uh, it's important to note the National Register nominations can be prepared by just about anyone. The National Park Service doesn't expect a nomination to be written as a thesis, but rather a document that answers essential research questions. And our office is available to provide guidance in each stage of the nomination drafting process. The nomination will include an architectural description, historic context, and photos and uh, figures. The architectural description will describe the building as it currently looks and will capture the character defining features of the nomination property. The architectural description should describe uh, all of the resources on the property in detail. The historic context portion of the nomination builds an argument to support one or more criteria for significance. This is where the nomination preparer will discuss the history of the property and make a case for significance uh, using the areas of significance. The historic context section of the nomination can usually be the uh, longest section of the nomination, but not always. Along with the architectural description and historic context, each nomination will need clear photographs that depict all parts of the property. Figures are, essential, are additional media uh, to be attached with the nomination. Figures can include, but are not limited to, historic maps, historic photographs, drawings, charts, or tables, and collages to help provide a visual component to the nomination. I also find that figures are a great way to include uh, additional information that maybe might not make it into the nomination, but you found during uh, research. For example, you might find a really awesome map uh, associated with an orphan's court record, um, and that's a great way to include it in the nomination. So getting back to the process, uh, once a nomination is fully drafted and reviewed by the State Historic Preservation Office, it will be scheduled for a presentation at the State Review Board for Historic Preservation. The State Review Board uh, typically meets about three times a year to consider nominations. If a nomination is recommended for advancement, the nomination is forwarded by the State Historic Preservation Office to the National Park Service for review. The National Park Service will review the nomination and issue a final determination where hopefully the property is listed in the National Register. So quite a lengthy process, but definitely a worthwhile process. So I've presented a lot of technical information about the eligibility requirements for listing a property in the National Register. So I wanna take a moment to encourage each of you to think outside of the box if you're considering a National Register nomination. Keep in mind, uh, the National Register program isn't only for high style architecture. Think critically and creatively about different aspects of the property that you're interested in and how the various layers of history associated with the property might fit together on a nomination form. Maybe you'll consider how historic trends can inform the proposed nomination boundaries. Or maybe you can link periods of alterations with specific periods of ownership. Utilizing a wide variety of sources will help to inform your understanding of a property and will ultimately um, be related in the nomination form. So I encourage you to really think about the historic significance of a property and then take the research process seriously because that's really where you're going to be making the case for this property. So now that we've talked about the process for researching and listing a property in the National Register, I want to give a couple of examples of recently listed properties in Delaware. Starting with African Union Church and Cemetery of Iron Hill near Newark, this church and cemetery was listed in the National Register in September of 2021 under Architecture, Ethnic History Black, 
religion, and social history. This list of property tells a range of stories uh, and history significant to the local community through a single nomination. The nomination is able to do this because it addresses uh, various areas of significance, making for a holistic uh, and complete nomination. Jumping down to Sussex County, the Richard Allen School in Georgetown illustrates a 20th century resource. This was also mentioned in my colleague Jen's uh, presentation uh, just earlier this afternoon. This property was listed in the National Register, the state level under Criterion A, providing information about education for African-American students in the 20th century. So again, we're taking something um, on the, the built environment and we're pulling it back into history and creating a context for it. Back just a little north, um, the Harrington Historic District in Kent County was listed to the National Register of Historic Places in 2019 under criteria A and C, focusing on architecture, commerce, and transportation. The nomination included 122 contributing and 87 non-contributing resources. And we haven't talked too much about districts this afternoon, but historic districts can be a way to group similar resources together and make a collective argument for significance and follow a lot of the same characteristics as an individual nomination. The Harrington Historic District covers a variety of areas of significance addresses of various components of history um, present in the town. And as you can see from the photos on the screen, uh, this group includes churches, houses, and commercial buildings collectively um, coming together to tell Harrington's um, story, historic narrative. The process of listing the property in the National Register of Historic Places is multifaceted and requires documentation. Today, I've only provided a brief overview of the program addressing common questions. If you're interested in learning more about the National Register Program, I would encourage you to reach out to our office or the State Historic Preservation Office, or consider visiting the National Park Service's website. The National Park Service has produced a variety of publications, including uh, best practices, white papers, and bulletins um, that delve into specific property type questions and scenarios um, and can really help come up with creative solutions for writing nominations for a wide variety of um, properties or property types that you might find across the United States. Uh, all of this information is accessible on their website um, by PDFs that you can download and uh, they're pretty easy to use. So I definitely encourage you to check all of that out. So I would like to thank you again for your time today. Um, if you have any questions about specific properties or interest in nominating a um, property to the National Register, please reach out. My contact information is on the screen and I would be very happy to talk to you about eligibility requirements um, for the National Register in regards to specific properties um, or help you find information about a property that is already listed in the National Register. Otherwise, I'm happy to take general questions. Um, thank you again for your time this afternoon. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, it's it's great just to get the word out about you know how how people can go about this. I know it's one of you know a com a fairly common question. Just people don't uh, know how to take that step, uh, but there's lots of interest out there. We do have a couple questions in the Q and A. Um, the first one is uh, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but um, you know, does does having a property on the National Register of Historic Places help save it from being demolished in any way? So I guess it's a can be a complex question, but mm, that is a good question. <laughs> so the National Register is uh, an honorary designation, which means that it won't prevent um, demolition. Um, you know, certainly local um, municipalities might have ordinances to to help um, preservation, but at a national level, uh, it's it's just purely an honorary designation. Yeah, if I could just add, so that your local zoning laws may use being on the National Register as a criteria, but it's the local zoning laws from the gov from uh, your land use departments that that governs whether or not something can be demolished. So they are tied together, but they are separate kind of separate issues. Um, and then the next question we have is, uh, how long does it usually take to get a property? all the way through the process. 
<laughs> sometimes sometimes it can take quite a while. Other times um, it can, you know, definitely be a shorter time span. It really depends on the the nomination preparer if they're working on this, um, just kind of as like a part-time project for themselves. Um, you know, it might take a little bit longer rather than if, you know, you have a consultant that's um, being paid to work specifically on a nomination. Um, you know, we, our office tries to provide comments as quickly as possible. Um, in terms of the the park service, though, you um, once we submit it to the park service for review, it's usually about a forty five day review period. So, just so everyone knows, if I understand correctly, usually I know in Newcastle County, uh, a nomination goes first to the county historic review board, and and they review it and approve it, and then it goes to the state historic review board, uh, as well as uh, the SHPO being involved you know, all along the way, but, and then it gets sent to the National Park Service. So there are a few steps in the, in the entire process. Um, right. Yeah. There's a couple of different reviews that go on and it really depends too where the property is um, located. So um, if it's within a CLG, then it would be reviewed by the CLG or yeah. certified local government prior to coming um, to the state review board. Um, so really it's a, not a very straightforward answer in terms of like, you know, within, Within 60 days, you can have a property listed. It's it's a little bit more fluid. The answer is it depends, I guess. <laughs> um, but the, the State Historic Preservation Office, as Emily said, is definitely there to, to help along the way. Um, and if your property is in a CLG, um, they they're sometimes uh, can offer to help cover the costs of um, a professional um, doing the nomination for you or helping to draft it. So that's something you can check out. And also I just wanted to mention that um, Preservation Delaware's grant program through the Delaware Preservation Fund, which is linked on the Delaware Pres Preservation Delaware's website, um, which typically has one grant round a year, now being in January, um, it has been opened up to allow funding requests for National Register nominations. So if if a property owner is interested in hiring someone, you're a little bit daunted by this process. And I I just from a layperson's expect uh perspective, I think it's a, maybe a little bit harder than than Emily let on. Um, you know, you uh we can uh, give grants out that can help pay for uh, assistance to draft these nominations. So that's a new aspect of our grant fund, and I wanted to make sure to mention that. Um. Okay, Emily, one more question so far. How often do you get inquiries on properties that are not eligible? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know if I have a, a real concrete answer to that. You know, when we um, we receive inquiries, we know we'll want photos of the interior or exterior of the building. Um, so we can really think about the different um, areas of significance the property might align with. Um, you know, so it, it really just it depends on... Um, kind of the the approach that's um going forward with the with a potential nomination but i don't i don't really know if i have a concrete answer on the the number of inquiries that we receive for for properties that aren't eligible properties that don't move move forward in any way um okay any other questions out there we still have a a few minutes left can add to to going back to like our first question um, you know, while we can't um, we can't save properties uh, that are listed in the National Register from demolition, um, you know, the Section 106 review process does um, require the consideration of effects the project will have on those properties. Um, just to, to elaborate on that, could you maybe touch on eligibility because that also comes into play, like for Section 106 and and maybe some other situations. So. Um, if the state historic preservation office determine officially determines something eligible, sure, yeah. So, um, you know, if something is found to be eligible um, through the section one hundred and six review process, um, in terms of the review process, it's treated as as eligible um, in terms of like the consultation process. Certainly, if somebody had interest in listing a property that was found eligible in 106, um, you know, our office would be happy to um, to discuss that with them further and help them develop a nomination schematic and, you know, potentially move a nomination forward. And regarding that question makes me think, too, of tax credit projects 
am I correct that um, if a property owner uh, is interested in, in state, I'm not sure about federal tax credits, um, even if their property is not yet on the National Register, they can start the process as long as they, within a certain period of time, do get it on the National Register. So if it's deemed eligible, they can move forward with the tax credit process while they also work to actually get it on the register. Is that true? Yes, the state or the, the federal tax credit program does have um, special provisions for um, properties that are interested in listing and there are special um, requirements that the property has to be listed, um, I believe, before the project is completed. Before it's completed. So mm -hmm. since those side. usually go on for a, a little while, um, it might it might be something that you could do sort of simultaneously. All right, well, we've got a bunch of attendees out there. Are there any other questions, burning questions for Emily? Now's your chance. Well, of course you can always follow up with her later, but. You know, I'll add too that if you do have interest in the National Register Program, um, you know, certainly do reach out. We would be happy to um, to provide guidance or assistance in any way possible. And they, if you are considering a National Register nomination, always start with our office. And if you didn't catch Emily's email address, you can, there's a link on the Preservation Delaware website to click through to their office, or um, I'm sure you can just do a keyword search and, and track down the State Historic Preservation Office fairly easily. And um, so Emily, I just wanted to thank you so much for um, this presentation. I think it will be helpful and you know, it will be on our YouTube channel for others to watch in the future. And um, echoing Alex's remarks earlier, I hope everyone will join us again tomorrow. We have two more sessions tomorrow morning, virtual here in, on Zoom. And then, oops, I think we might have a new question, a, a new, one new question. And then um, we also have a gathering tomorrow night in Smyrna at the Painted Stave uh, distillery. So we hope as many of you as can join us will do so. And uh, you can just click through on our website as well for tickets to that event. Um, so the next question is a residential property is not eligible for federal credits. That's true, right, Emily? Only that is correct. Commercial. The federal, the yeah, the federal tax credit program is um is only for income producing um, properties or depreciable properties. The state uh, historic preservation tax credit program is eligible for um, property owners, nonprofit organizations, um, resident curators, and uh, income or, or income producing properties. There are also some local governments in Delaware, uh, such as Newcastle County, that have another layer of local uh, tax benefit as well. And again, on Preservation Delaware's site website, we have a list of of the ones that we're aware of uh, at, for the local tax credits and tax benefits. Um, and then just another a thank you from one of our attendees. So I'll echo those thanks and assume maybe we don't have any more questions right now. Um, so thank you, Emily, and uh, please do get in touch with her if anyone's interested in, in having a property considered. Okay. All right, take care everyone, have a great evening and hope to see everyone tomorrow morning. Thank you. Bye-bye.